Appalachian, the Appalachian Brewing Company in Harrisburg, and we're going to go on a brewery tour here today. Hello. Well, Lisa's already here waiting for us. How did you get here so fast? Even before you, I'm so impatient to take a tour what? of the brewery at the Appalachian Brewing Company. Would you like me to open the door for you? No, oh, please. Check out the gorgeous thing you have. Nice, huh? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I have to clean off the, the lens here. Got a little water on it. Our grain This is where the starting the process begins with the brewery itself, brewing the beer. This is all of our specialty malt. So when it comes to depending on what we're brewing that week or whatever, whether it's like a, like a double IPA, mountain lager, stout, we use specific types of color, flavor, aroma malts to distinguish the beer. Our uh, silo outside is our two row, or two row malt, which is our base malt for all of our beer. Mm. So depending on how much beer we produce, if we're driving a single or a double, we take consideration with the auger, and I'll show you what the auger looks like. Right. But this right here is our elevator shaft. Um, so we actually turn it on to get the two row outside, bring it down here, and then it, it shoots it up to the third floor, and from the third floor to the auger, sends it back, and you'll see it in the next room, the machine that um, grinds everything up. It breaks the, the grain down, um, and then gets kind of like that oatmeal consistency going on to get that mash and blending everything together. So you get your grain from Heidelberg? Mm -hmm. And, and, all, and, and all of the like the breweries around here, Maryland, pretty much any brewery will get all of our um, malt from the same big company. Really? Mm -hmm. I mean, best and, and malt these, and, and, yep. and, and these are these are different ones. The best yeah, Vienna, so, so best, the, best so Vienna, Munich, Vienna, and, Munich uh, yeah. wheat malt. There are different styles of malt that we use. Oh, yeah. huh. on. And then there's yeah. even some behind you guys here too. Like there's dark Munich. And then in these jars, these are. God knows how long this this malt has been sitting here, but these are just showing you different types of malts and different oh. color malts that we have. Oh, so this um, would be for the the porters and the yeah, the stouts and all. And even actually, we do use yeah. I mean, most of the dark ones um, we, we, we use. We actually use some to get color for like a, out of focus, like a darker IPA or mm -hmm. something like that. Oh, uh -huh. so, uh, we we'll use some, not a whole lot though. Right, just enough for the color. Mm -hmm. and so you've been brewing here since what, 1997? Uh, not me personally. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah the company's here. been established in 1996, 97, something like that. Um, this actually used to be like a uh -huh. uh, factory. It used to be uh, four floors, sustained a couple of fires, rumored to be haunted. Um, oh, I like that. Yeah. The uh, what's really the doors with the stained glass? Those are actually the original doors. Yeah. The like, oh. wood panel used to be the original. Uh. That's the original. Um, entrance to the building that we refurbished. Hmm. We have over uh, a thousand wooden beams of Douglas fir wood, all the original, wow. that we actually uh, refurbished as well. Yeah. Is this thing above uh, flood stage? Is it above the flood? Yes. I okay, okay, I guess because so. I guess the last big flood here was was seventy two maybe. Something like that. Yeah. yeah, I think this is above the. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty far back. It's 10th Street here. But uh, the water come up. Come, okay. Yeah. Water comes up pretty high there, though. So. But yeah, this is this is the green. This is where the process begins with, with cool. making the beer. Alrighty. Cool. So so, so you uh, so. Looks like you have to like manually bring these in. We do. Yes. Yeah, so the way how the way how this works is that whenever the grain pallets come in, they actually have, we have a side loader um, loading dock area. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just bring the pallets in from the front with a pallet, like with a forklift. And then there's usually one guy on the forklift, two or three of us outside the front, bringing the bags in one by one. And we have to stack them on these pallets. So yeah, it's, it, it, I mean, it takes, it, depending on how much, how much grain we get, how much malt we get. And, and with all yeah. two or three of us that work, <laughs> yeah. um, it takes maybe like 10 uh -huh. It's not too bad. Yeah, I mean, they look big, but they, you know, 55 pounds. Right. Yeah. Maybe, go, maybe, 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 maybe not. I, maybe I couldn't get that job. No, but we're gonna go work out. Yeah. Yeah. This is just. I mean, this is just the machine that we turn on the elevator um, and the masher and the auger and all mm -hmm. that. So.
Yeah. Yeah. It's also interesting that you get this uh, from from Germany because mm. you have uh, one of the key machines over at the uh, the soda factory. You know, was uh, right. it was it was uh, built in Germany. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, clearly Germany is the place. It is the place. I mean, soda, of course, and beer. Beer, beer. absolutely. So just watch your. It was all beer. Here. All the soda was beer. <laughs> All right, so up here we have the mash tun and the omelet. So I was telling you guys earlier about the elevator, uh -huh. the third floor. From there, it shoots down to the omelet. And this is where all the grains chopped up, mashed up, mixed in, depending on what kind of grain we use. From there, we transfer to the mash tun, adding the hot water, starting the, um, the mixing process. And that's where we get the oatmeal consistency. Hmm. We, got, we start building up the enzymes <clears throat> to get that um, mixing going to, for the grain to transfer to the whirlpool and kettles to start adding in all the, the hops and um, yeast and creating all that hmm. oxygen to start creating. And you add that in there? Well, no, this is just the, the hot water oh, okay. with, all the, with all the mixed in chopped up grain. Okay. And then it's, it gets that oatmeal consistency. And once we get that building process, we then transfer through the pipe system down to our um, kettle to start boiling and brewing the beer. Mm. Yeah, the kettle's okay. that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll, 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 I might be able to open it up, open the hatch for it and show you what. Yeah, cool. As long as we're not actually, yeah, that should be, should be put out. If not, I'll yell at the guys. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it's free beer. I know, it's right? It's got a straw. <laughs> but this, this is the messy process because sometimes we'll get that grain like out here in the auger spinning around. Uh, yeah. The grain will come everywhere out here, so this is where we have to wear our, our work boots. I saw them up there. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah, look at them, yeah. Yeah. So this is the messy part. I mean, we enjoyed doing it, but um, it, it can be messy like, sometimes, depending on, depending on who's growing. <laughs> so, down here. Yeah, you poke your head in there, it should be a kettle. And this gets the boiling. I mean, we're talking over 200 degrees Fahrenheit of hot water. So mm. it gets real hot, real steamy, real quick. Oh. Deeper than I thought. Mm -hmm. And we actually get in there and clean, too. I mean, you have the step on down here. So we actually have to go in there Ooh. and sometimes scrub some of the excess residue. No. Oh. Which will transfer to get keep this clean and sanitized from the, to the next batch so there's no contamination. Uh -huh. It comes to one batch over the other. Because mm. we'll have the yeast and all that. And we don't want to get infected. Oh, yeah. The beer, that will affect the flavor, the color, all that. Okay. So, any questions up here at all? The Whirlpool then. So yeah, the Whirlpool, it, it, this is where it mixes everything together. Like at this point, it is an official, I mean, it's, it's beer in these two, you know, the kettle okay. and the Whirlpool. I mean, imagine the kettle as if like a typical kettle that you have at home. Just so this is water. super hot. Super hot. Um, and a, on a larger scale, just like a typical kettle you have in the kitchen. And so it mm. goes in that pipe, mm -hmm. goes over? Yep. Mm. Okay. Transfer the whirlpool, and just like what a whirlpool would do, it, it spins everything, keeps it constantly turning and mixing. Uh -huh. um, and then from there, we transfer it to our fermenters. And then the fermenters let it sit and um, ye add the yeast buildup to get that CO2 going on, and then let it just become, I mean, it's beer, but just let it sit until it's ready. And typically, depending on what kind of beer we're making, lagers, lagers and ales take about, ideally, like four, like a four week to hmm. six week period for it to be actually ready to, to drink. Um, lagers, about maybe two to four weeks, give or take, oh, okay. depending on. I thought you said lagers and ales were four to five. Ales four to five. Yeah, ales are like four to five. Four and to six weeks. Lagers about four. two to four. Um, they're what just. Hefeweizen are they like super short? Hefeweizens are typically an ale, oh, depe okay. depending on the type of yeast that we use. So mm -hmm. that's going to be in that category. We only really use two types of yeast. We use wheat or no, we use lager yeast and ale yeast. Um, so most of our beers are either like a lager based or an ale based beer. 
Um, I mean, stouts are typically like an ale yeast that we use. I mean, stouts are a different type of beer, but we use the primary ale yeast stuff there. Okay. So then, uh, how, how do they, you know, where, where, do they, where do they measure stuff, you know, to get the consistency from one, you know, brew batch to another? When it comes to like, like measure, like what, what do you mean? Like, I mean like the, you know, the quantities of different types of, of well, I mean, we have, we have like, like, I mean we have scales and just the computer system that we have here to distinguish and also like our calculators to figure out like how much, how much grain we have to use for uh -huh. one batch versus another. Yeah. And then also when it comes to like, how much yeast we have to put in, how much hops we have to put in. Uh, and actually, we can probably, see if we can probably get you guys up here. So if we're making like an IPA, for example, at the out of focus, we have to dry hop that. So what we do is depending on where it is located, um, in the top we actually have dry hops to these holes. And we have to measure, we have a scale in our cooler uh, to distinguish how much hops to weigh in to hmm. figure out uh -huh. how much we have to put in. Oh, okay. So, so it's over here where that, that, that stuff gets put in. Mm, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So it's all, it's all pre-measured? Yeah, so but by the time it transfers from the Whirlpool into our fermenters, everything's already measured out, ready to go. It's a, it's a, it's a beer. Okay. It just depends on, like with adding the hops, when in that time part, we have to check and see, okay, if we brewed it on this state, we have to add the hops by this state hmm. to get that flavor uh -huh. or aroma. Um, so, I mean, we, we just keep tallies on that with, with forms and stuff like that. All right, so we have our fermenters, and these are all pretty much empty. I think we only have like three full ones right now. Hmm. So from here, before we actually send it to our bright tanks to start bottling it and uh, kegging it, this is our filter. So the filtering process, we hook up the hoses down here, runs through the system, cleans out any type of extra residue like enzymes and all that to, for, there's no, like, essentially when you pour beer, you don't want to have any residue. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't affect the flavor, it doesn't affect, it's not like it's contaminated or anything like that, it's just for clarity purposes and just to make it look presentable and quality beer, we have the filtering to actually allow it to, to make it not hazy or anything like that, to get mm -hmm. that nice crisp flavor and color. And do, uh, do, you run the, do you run the hoses to this? Because I, yeah, see, cause yeah, I yeah. see, because I see, because I see, this is sort of on wheels. Looks like you had to. Uh, no, we you actually could, you could run it it So, like, if, for example, like this right now currently has mountain water. So what we do then is we actually hook up a hose from the fermenter, hooking it up through the filter, and then um, running it back through, through, uh, yeah, through the fermenter again to actually get it filtered hmm. and all that. So then from there, once the filtering process is complete, we transfer the fermenter to the bright tank. And the bright tank is when it's ready to be propped for kegging, um, CO, adding to the CO2 carbonation, getting the right levels to crash it to the right temperature, because that's when we add the light call in the cold liquor to get the, the temperature down to about 34, 36 degrees Fahrenheit mm. uh, to, to have that nice cold beer. So that's the filter. Um, once we're done, filtering the beer and any type of yeast that's left over that's sitting in the fermenters, we actually have the yeast prop tanks to store it. Um, or if it's, and sometimes even with the yeast prop tanks, if we don't actually have the yeast sitting in there currently, we typically will transfer small batches. Like if, if we do like a Susquehanna stout, but we want to add like a flavoring to it, like if we want to make it a coffee stout or like a chocolate stout, what we'll do then is we'll transfer so many, I mean, it's a small barrel system, so. Typically, it'll fit, I'd say, about 14 halves, which is about 20, about 20, 28 barrel system. Um, and then we add, based off of what, how much like chocolate or, or whatever kind of flavor we want to add to it, we add it to the yeast prop tank, and then we just let it mix and churn until it's ready to go. And that's about maybe a, a day, if that, of a process, to so just let it solidify and get that flavoring. And then once we realize when it's ready, we then transfer that. Um, and, and keg it. Hmm. So. Yeah. so yeah, there's that. And then here we come to the bright tanks. Now the bright tanks is one we're at that 
30, 30, 40 degrees Fahrenheit temperature without any glycol in the cold liquor. And at this point, I mean, it's ready to go. So we already pegged about 18 halves yesterday of the water get wheat, so you can see it's actually still posed up ready to go. Um, we're uh, about maybe about 44 gallons. Uh, We'll probably, we'll probably take it out from Monday. So. Is that a manual process? Um, I mean, yeah, we do have to like, hey, we have to hook up the hoses, we have to do everything at, like, checking the levels and making sure we're ready to go. I mean, it's, I'd say it's about a good hour, give or take, hour, hour long process from the beginning of, of just like checking the readings to make sure it's the right carbonation level, the right, uh, what we need to be at to, to keg it. So sometimes we might be over, maybe under, depending on the level we have to add or subtract the CO2. We don't want to over carve mm -hmm. it, uh, but then also if it's under carve that we have to add the CO2. So yeah. we try to keep it consistent as possible, but sometimes it does happen. Uh, and then we just have to just adjust the CO2 rating to, to yeah. allow air to come out or air to get in. And what, what we're not putting it in the keg? I mean, is that, I mean well, you put it in an individual keg each? I mean, each yeah, or yeah. absolutely. So uh -huh. we actually have a host system. It's hanging up dry. It's typically I mean, just, it's like, just like you fill a growler? Pretty much. Yeah. Or just like if you, if you hook up, imagine like if you hook up a keg with like a pump tap and all that stuff. Uh -huh. We have a hose that have like four at a time. So we have oh, okay. a balance of nine halves. Okay. And then just hooking the CO2 up to those hoses, we hook up just like transferring with the fermenters. We hook up a hose to the brake tank and it transfers the, the beer into the four, four kegs at a time. Oh, okay. So depending on how many kegs we have to keg, it takes anywhere from uh, maybe a half an hour to, well, I mean, there's days when we keg like 100 hours. Wow. So it take, you know, all morning or afternoon, it take four or five hours, uh -huh. depending on, it also <laughs> depends on how fast the CO2 is like, pushing. Yeah. So, you know, if, if they're letting more air out, the beer's going to go in faster. If, yeah. If the air is not moving out as fast, the beer's slowly pegging the beer. Uh -huh. So from there, if we're not kegging, we bottle. So what we do then is we hook up the hoses to the brake tanks here, and then we transfer to the next one, which is our bottle. The soda machine, it's the other place to run at, uh, could, could run at 140 a minute. Yeah. But it doesn't run at 140 a minute. Right, yeah. So it's about 100, about 100 a minute yeah. average. Some slower, some longer, depending on how the run's going. Uh, but the filler also will put all the neck labels, the body labels, the crowns, everything uh -huh. that filler. And then we have what we consider a Laverne and Shirley moment where a guy's standing off like on the line as bottles and making sure everything is like the crowns are on properly, the labels are not, you know, on to make sure the bottles look presentable. There's yeah. Short fills, short fills we dispose of. We don't we obviously can't sell short fills, but they do end up going through because I mean, I mean, I mean, don't, I mean, I mean don't you like put them on a pallet and uh, you know that's the uh, that's the, the day's bonus? Um <laughs> Yeah, I, I neither cannot deny nor confirm for, for video purposes here. I can't deny nor confirm that actually happens. Um, but, I mean, yeah, we we may have, I mean, we might save some for sampling uh -huh. to make sure the, yeah. the flavor and the quality is there because we do have to keep samples on hand for, for records to make sure you have someone buys a case and say, hey, this beer tastes funny or, or I'm, I'm missing a bottle or, or something, whatever. Uh, we have some on hand to give samples out in the event. But not a bunch of luscious. No. <laughs> well, you know, 
So we, so, so, we, so we went to Ben and Jerry's, and Ben and Jerry's, you know, I mean, part of the, the perks of the job there was they could, get, they could take home a pint every day. Well, I'll put it this way. Like, we do, we do get a free case every other week. Okay. So we do actually have... Oh, you don't have... Who cares about the seconds in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. First. I mean, we, we get the... Okay. And they're, like, fresh cases fully ready to go. So we do get perks, ah. and, and, you know, we do have soda here, too, even though soda's made over Mechanicsburg. I know. Yeah. We went and did that, too. Yeah, um, yeah. Soda is brought over here on occasion, so if we don't want to take beer for the week, we can take soda cases, too. You know, so when I was when I was younger, mm -hmm. you know, I went to the Mint in Philadelphia, yeah. and I always wanted to grow up and be the person in the Mint who swept those coins oh, off yeah. the floor. You know, uh -huh. so you know that's why I'm always interested in yeah, the seconds. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Good point. Um, so that so that's the bottling of the beer. Now the packaging process, we have the case director, and they come basically just folded up and wrapped, and then the case director, of course, just unboxes them and glues them together and yeah. sends them down the line. And then we have six packs that gets dropped in stuff. So a 24 pack, it's four six packs. Um, and that run, depending on how much we run, that could be, I mean, the, the line itself feel, fills up about 35 cases at a time. So when you do 100 bottles a minute with 30, and the whole, and the line's full of 35 cases, that's, that's you can, a you lot. Can, you, can, you can crank it out. We do crank it out. And then we have the drop packer, which is what I normally do on bottling days to make sure that there's no bottles that drop out. Uh -huh. um, when it comes to cases, I want to make sure that they're stuffed in properly, none of them fall out. Or if there's a broken bottle that comes through, I take that case off so yeah. we don't sell a case with a broken bottle, it's leaking all out. I think that, that sign is really funny. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, like, we, like, we like to joke around here. And it just fell off. We're like, you know, we're going to take this because the restaurant's not going to notice. So we decided to just hang up there and just be like, hey, there's no alcohol behind this point. So, yeah. yeah but there is. And then from here, once the, uh, the bottles or pallets stack, box are ready to go, they're 50 stack high, we send them to our main pool. Send, cool, send them to where? To our cooler. Oh, okay. Cooler, and that's where all of our kegs are full, uh -huh. and cases, and all that. So. And then the other little machine on the end over there, that's our keg washer. So mm. anytime the restaurant has empty kegs or other things like the or the or whatever, they would bring the kegs back to those locations. We clean them here, um, and they start with a, either an acid wash or a toxic wash, and then we go a red cycle. And then mm. we stack them nine to a pallet, and then we send the clean kegs down to the cooler too. That's uh, making the beer and producing it, packaging it, and then shipping it out. More. I'm gonna I'm gonna limit the ones that I that I try. Alright, so this is our New England IPA. Alright, I've never tried that and I think it's appropriate to try that. Uh oh I, I gotta get out my untapped. <laughs> there you go. Alright now I'm an untapped follower to I love untapped. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Ring the bell to get notices about new videos. Hasta luego. See you soon.